We've got a woman sitting in a chair in military uniform, glitched out zombies, glitched out NPCs, and apparently declothing mechanics. This game is called Code 29, or if you scroll down to buy it, Code Molly. This is the most expensive game we've explored in this series, and somehow it, it's actually worse than Silver Soul. But at least the system requirements aren't too bad. Apparently all you need is a processor and a an operating system. According to the dev, there are multiple bosses, multiple choices, and multiple endings. Now you see, I've played this game multiple times. I've encountered probably one thing that I, I, I would consider to be a boss. I've had literally only one choice to do what the game says, and there is one ending, one ending that I can't even get to work. So let's see what the hell this game is all about. Well, upon starting it up, we get our first jump scare. Steam VR, for a non-VR game. God damn it, man. But because it's on, I have to now change my sound settings back to what they were before. As if things weren't already a little bit weird, just going through the main menu, there's this thing called Oi. As a British man, I immediately want to respond by saying, Oi you. But it turns out this is just a, uh, a way for us to understand the keybinds. There's no way to change the key binding. In fact, there's no settings at all. You've just got this weird image pointing to things and saying what they are, with part of it cut off. But let's just analyze what we're seeing on screen right here. You've got these different keys that are different colors, with arrows pointing to them telling us what they do. You've got switch weapon with the S cut off. You've got R for reload. Apparently F is move, not WASD. X is your flashlight switch. And then you have shift for running. On the mouse, you can fire with left click, click or scroll for the perspective switch, and right click, which apparently says times Miro. I have no idea what times Miro actually does, but I guess we're just gonna have to see. So let's, let, let's load in. Um. All right, well, first things first, my, my cursor's not even really... No idea what's going on. Well, okay, there's a robot. There's a, a woman. And uh, apparently I need to... I need to do things. I can't aim down the site. That's a good start. And um, it appears that I'm shooting. Yep. They didn't even get the aim right. They didn't even get the aim right. For a first person, third person shooting game, they couldn't even get the shooting right. It's the main mechanic in this game, and this is the result. Anyway, I go down this overpass and uh, get ambushed by a few more enemies, which I had to, again, aim off to the side just to hit. But thankfully, there is a in-game fix for this. So apparently there's like a perspective thing. Um, oh, wow. Road. Yes, I, I know what a road looks like. I was just looking at the twisted legs. Apparently, so anyway, apparently there's a perspective thing, okay? So that's third person. That's cool. Then we go back to first person. And we're all good. Although it appears that first person... Well... I thought it was broken, but it turns out it's not. Uh, I just had to go in third and first person again to correct my aim. Very standard uh, mechanics right there. After finally fixing my aim, I make my way down the overpass. I could see this walking sentry gun just stuck on a car, and I innocently thought, hey, could I drive this? I was pressing a whole bunch of buttons, but I, I just couldn't figure it out. So even though there weren't any settings in this game from the beginning, I thought that maybe I could access the OI button again by just pressing escape. But it turns out escape doesn't really do anything. So I explore all my other options by pressing a bunch of other keys. And let me just say that it, it, it didn't really go too well. Okay, that's not it. That's reload. What does that do? What does that do? What does that do? And it's P. Okay, so apparently P does stuff, and all we have is load and continue. Yeah. P again. Okay, it's gone. But, great. Now my cursor is... Yeah, cool. I'm now locked in. I can't do anything. I think the machine's trying to save me, but it's already broken. No way. So if I hold right click, this is how I can aim. This is how I have to aim for the rest of the game. Are you kidding me? I mean, if it works, that's that's good, but it's it's not ideal. <laughs> Can't 
can I use this? Apparently, yes. Game has been saved, so they use telephones for saving. Right, I guess we try that again. What is it? P. Load. That didn't work. Oh no, it worked. Now, even though I managed to fix it by reloading the game, it turns out when you load a save, it breaks everything. You see, I didn't know this at the time because this was my first playthrough, but there were meant to be quest markers. Now, they do show up later, but in, in the weirdest way possible. However, I was kind of lost, so I thought to myself, you know what, why don't we just explore this very strange world? I went down the road a little bit, and it didn't really take me too long to find a helicopter in the distance. Now, I thought I could actually fly a helicopter because there was a screenshot in the game of a helicopter. I don't know why I thought it was possible to fly a helicopter because when I actually got there, I couldn't do anything. So after this major letdown, I continue exploring. And on my way, I found this random dog. There's just a random dog. Okay, now he's following me. Is he friend? He's friendly. I've, I've now got a dog. It's not gonna... Come on. Follow me. If I look away, do you stop following? Okay, no, you're following me. For some reason, the dog is probably the most normal part about this whole game. But you see, before I saw the dog, I noticed these big tanks surrounded by these military tents. And if you know anything about survival horror games, military camps have things in them. So I tried to get the dog to follow me over there, but I'm glad it didn't. Because if you already thought this game was broken, wait until you see this. Well, this is nice. The barrels don't obey, obey any kind of physics. And these containers look way... Way too big for my character, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've, n I've never seen a, a tank this big, and it, it looks like... Oh god, okay. Alright. Okay. I mean, they can't shoot straight either. <laughs> what? I can't believe what I'm seeing right now, man. This is amazing. So they're shooting at me, but they can't do anything. All the bullets are going through me. Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to save some ammunition. This this is getting very annoying. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so confused, man. This game impresses me so much. How does that even happen to somebody's face? <laughs> I can't get over this. It's 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 hilarious what's happening. Okay, it's, yeah, it gets worse. It gets worse. This is this. <laughs> it's just amazing. This is perfect. They <laughs> they literally don't like. They don't need to change this game whatsoever. It is. Uh, it's, it's amazing. The only way I can explain this is that they are meant to be friendly NPCs, but they literally shoot at anything. So that's why I can't take damage. Or it's because they forgot to add damage to them? I, I don't know. But if I was to summarize this game in honestly one screenshot, it would be this. But if you thought the military guys were weird, these guys make even less sense. Christ. Okay, I guess they heard all the gunshots. This guy is very weird looking. Whoop. He's got... He's like a, uh, a snail. What the f***? <laughs> he died. Is that what they do? They just love their head. They rage quit. And then there you go. I... It's looking at me. Mm, yeah. Mm, I don't know what to do, buddy. I'm just gonna have to leave you there. It's your fault. You, uh... You made me do it. Not gonna lie, the character models aren't the worst, okay? I'm not- I'm not just trying to bash on this game, I'm genuinely trying to find some good things here. But the asset dimensions, like these massive boxes, don't feel exactly right. I've got a feeling that these boxes are meant to be, you know, the normal size of a box. It's not exactly a crate, it, it literally looks like something that you can just pick up with your hands. They just increased it to this size. But as if things couldn't get any more weird. I, honestly, I feel like I've said this five times already. I noticed that there was this power plant and I saw in the Steam description that it mentioned something about power plants. So I go over to this silo or whatever you call it and there's a guy there. It's, it's down to minus 10 but look at this guy. I think this might be a boss. Oh Christ he is! 
Where is he? Is he just stuck up there? I have no idea if this guy was meant to be like a, 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 a secret boss or just a secret enemy you're meant to kill really quick. But he just flew up into the sky and now he's just turned into sparkles. Anyway, I go into one of the power plant buildings and it turns out I can actually flip the power on. But I have no idea what this is meant for and... I guess I'm just gonna have to find out. But there was another silo in the distance, and I thought to myself, well, that seems strangely placed. Why don't I go check it out? So I go over there just to see if there was anything special, and lo and behold, nothing. Absolutely nothing. All I found out was that this was some random asset just placed out here, not even where it's meant to be. I mean, it's it, it, it's on the road. But then again, if you look anywhere outside of the city, there's nothing else. It's quite literally just a flat plane. So I go back to the power plant, find another building that I assume has more switches in, battle this big dude who drops a silencer for my pistol, which comes in very handy, and flip on some more switches. But again, still confused. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. So I wander around a little bit, and I found this basketball court. There's not too much to say about it besides the fact that there is a dog in the middle of it. I don't know what value it brings to the video, but I don't know. Dog. Anyway, I went on further, and I noticed that there was this strange cluster of enemies near a door. So I clear them out and enter this building. But like most things so far, none of what happens next makes any sense. Enemies. Uh, a random picture of a man and uh, some cut out there. Can we just appreciate? Hang on, let I've got to kill this woman first before I, I, I make another criticisms. Did they, uh, did they not see the cars here, car reflections, or did they think that that would be like what the outside looks like? I feel like this is one of those. It's like one of those window shop graphics that you get for the outside of things, but they've just put it inside, and that is... They've not really put anything there. Is that anything to it? No. I mean, just random windows placed around. Did I just buy, like, pocket money for some kid who who's learning development? I feel like I've done that. Anything in here? Oh! Okay, there's an arrow. There is an arrow. What is this arrow? Looks like this is her. Who's her? Take her to the uh, top of the parking lot. What? So now there's objectives. Okay, it's bugged. A fat one. What are you on about? This is quite interesting, considering what I'll reveal later. What's happened is that I've activated a quest. There's meant to be an NPC here, but they're clearly not there. But of course, at this time, I didn't know that, so I went ahead to the parking lot. Because apparently a plane, that's important for later, a plane will carry me away. So after exploring this terribly designed building, I go over there and it's quite straightforward. Well, he's dead. Just everything else knows where I am. Christ. What is going on to my clothes? Oh, why am I stuck? Okay, he's dead. Where's the other guy gone? Did he just die? Did the other guy kill him? Or has he just gone back up or something? Right, is this where I'm gonna go? Guess. Already close to the destination. Okay. Is that where I'm gonna go? A helicopter? Can I actually fly this helicopter? Right, so this is the situation. Uh, th th it turns out the plane is actually a helicopter. It also turns out that nothing happens when I go up here. But one thing that I found kind of weird, but didn't realize how it would escalate later, was that upon damage, upon taking a significant amount of damage, my clothes become torn. I guess that's a cool mechanic. But what happens when most of your health is gone? Well, I guess we're just gonna have to see. Oh, that was stupid, wasn't it? No, I'm alive. I'm alive. I I'm good. I'm all good. Some guy with a boombox. <laughs> oh! Oh, Christ. Whoa. Whoa! Where's the gun? Whoa! <laughs> Alright. Let's see if he can actually get me. Okay. Oh, God! Right, well, it appears, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, 
you lose your clothes upon lower health. You know, the, the great part about this is that if I look down right now, uh, that's just more work for me in editing. And I've got to look down to collect some ammo, so uh, let's just cut the screen to black. And there we go. Cool. There's a tree, it's graphics, and there's a big one. A big, a big mutant. I guess I gotta kill it, because it's gonna kill me. <laughs> well, there we go. So yeah, that's the game. Before getting absolutely stomped, I uh, I lost all of my clothes. And yes, it does show everything, hence why I had to blur it. But now you might be wondering what this game is like when it actually works. Well, first things first, these save points are completely useless because when you load your game, it breaks every single time. But when you start, you're supposed to go all the way down to this elevator. But my next objective was to go to the power plant, where I only had to go to one of the buildings to flip the switches on. After doing this, you're meant to go all the way back to the elevator. And if the game didn't break already, if you press the button, the doors open. For some unknown reason, the doors are also broken in this game. I, I don't know how you can manage this. When you go into the elevator, it automatically takes you up to the top. And there's this boss that you're meant to fight, which is really easy because all you have to do is go on a floor just above it. And once you've defeated said boss, you get this mutation, which allows you to upgrade one of two things. Now, there is some lore. You, you can actually read things in this game, but none of it makes sense. And I can't even begin to try and explain what the hell is going on. So after this bit, I have to go to this specific location. Once I get there, it then tells me to go somewhere else. There's nothing else to do here. It was just a marker to get me into the general area. When I actually get to the location where I need to be, it tells me to explore four buildings. Now, here are four buildings. Turns out you can't enter any of these buildings. And it also turns out that none of these buildings are the building that you're looking for. Even though with this massive tree in it telling you to find four buildings, and there are four buildings right here, you have to actually go a bit further and just walk up to one of the random buildings in this area. I've just realized after editing this that I've said building like a million times, so uh, let's just call this a house. Anyway, after doing that, I'm then told to go to the same building where we found this ghost girl. And it actually turns out that this was an NPC that is meant to follow you all the way up to the top of the car park. It's quite straightforward getting to the top. And for some reason, there's a policeman trying to kill us, which really doesn't make any sense because, I, I, you know, I, I, I would assume that at least if he's working for the government, he would be friendly. But I don't know. Maybe there's some hidden lore that I've missed. But the worst part about this is that there's the helicopter, there's the girl, and there is literally no way you can get her to follow you to the helicopter. No way. Honestly, I, I, I tried for ages. And I assume that when you bring her to the helicopter, that completes the game. But you can't even do that. Look, we've already played some pretty weird games on this channel. And Silver Soul was a pretty bad game. But at least that game wasn't fundamentally broken from the start. I understand that it's not easy being an independent developer, but to me, this just looked like a game that was thrown together, not even properly tested, without any care whatsoever. To be fair, it was a good laugh, but you could still spend that £5 on something much better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, make sure to like the video so more of it comes your way. You can also find me on Twitter over here. And finally, I'd like to say a massive thanks to all my lovely supporters over on Patreon. I say this every video, but I truly mean it. I genuinely appreciate all the support you guys have given me over there. And of course, a special thanks to my Wicked Slayers and Cyber Wizards. Negadan, Gibbles by the Dozen, Time Wiz, Anastasius, Wick Nola, The Cuddly Bot, Montana Tuska, Rare Alex, Basto, Finra, Alex Caprol, Lin Kerr, Mr. Pine, Spooky, Artistical, Rosal Bugatti, King Swing, Distant Reality, Legayana, Drake Funyan, Christian Barbu, and Shadow Banisher. If you want to support for as little as £1 a month, you can do so in the description below. Anyway, I'll see you next week where I play another very, very weird game.